I've definitely been doing a lot of different, a lot of different stuff with prospecting. Um, okay. Lot, you know, a lot of different strategies with with prospecting, and uh, been having some been having some success. You know, kind of. Uh, you know, every every time I talk to him, nothing nothing's really changed that much. I'm constantly, I constantly have a fulfillment problem. Because I have I have too many new clients coming in. That's right. that is my issue. Is that I get um, I get a lot of big clients that that come in, and I you know I, I charge high prices, um, and you know sometimes they don't work out, sometimes they do work out. But you know the whole thing for me is that I you know I'm I'm trying to niche down and be more specific about my prospecting because otherwise it it gets very chaotic in terms of project management yeah having to switch from one industry to another yeah. and uh yeah. and so i'm really trying to get more targeted with my marketing not just because of revenue but really more so that i can streamline my my operations yeah your processes um yeah I, you're um you might be an exception to the rule within the group because I know that there's still a few members that have, that have the problem that, you know, they, they've got that problem. They can't get any leads or they can't get enough leads. Maybe give us um, some insights into what you're doing in terms of prospecting and how yeah. you're getting those leads. I mean, having too many leads is a nice problem to have, right? Because it puts you in a favorable position because you think you can then pick and choose who you want to work with, and that's that's an ideal that's an ideal um, place to be. Yeah, yeah, it gives me the ability to, you know, I I throw out higher prices, I think, because of that. And if it, you know, if it gets if it gets turned down, I try to look at it as like if it gets turned down, that's fine, mm. and if it gets accepted then I have enough money where if I need to bring in a specialist or consultant or something like that, then I have the padding to do yeah. something. I really like the way you worded that then. And this is something that, and this is the way that I approach people that come to me prospects for SEO. Um, I think there might be a lot of people, particularly freelancers, and there may be some in the group that have this win lose mentality. If I get it, I've won. If I don't get it, I've lost. When you throw out a big number and you don't get it, then that's okay too. It's not necessarily a loss. If you get it, that's a win, of course, right? Because you've thrown out a big number, you get the campaign. But if you don't get it, then you really haven't lost anything. And I think I think there might be, you know, I spoke to a lot of freelancers where they still have that win-lose mentality. Um, and that's, you know, when you're afraid of losing, that's where you can, you know, have that whole, fear that that mindset of worry and fear and desperation starts kicking into your efforts and that's when you start worrying you know the desperation starts to show through in your sales and pitching and you'll you might do silly things like dropping your price um i really like the way that you worded that because that's that's essentially what i do i throw out big numbers you know if they want to work with me i want it to count i want to be able to get them results um i want it to be worth my while um, but if they don't, well then that's okay too, because I'd rather have, you know, right. three, three people say no and get the fourth one at 10 grand than be trying to get everyone on board to say yes at $300. Right. And it, and a lot of that I think is a, a symptom also of not having a real pipeline. If you don't have a pipeline, and you don't have lead air coming in, then you have a mentality of scarcity. Yeah. When you have scarcity yeah. mentality, then lowering your price is it's the only yeah. option. You know, yeah. it's, the, it's the only option. So, um, so yeah. How are, you, how are you getting leads, George? I'm doing some very simple stuff. I'm just doing, I'm doing 101. Um, I'm, I'm getting most of my, I get my leads from three different channels. One is word of mouth. Um, two, well, I'm sorry, four different channels. Word of mouth, 
Um, my website is starting to rank, so I've got some leads from organic, from SEO, uh, but mostly from LinkedIn prospecting and from cold calls. Right. Okay. And so maybe Facebook, um, if you could expand on each of those, George, and give us a bit more, just for other members in the group, give us some a bit more insight into exactly what you're doing in each channel and how how yeah. how that's working. Yeah. And I've spent, I mean, you, you saw, I've, I've spent, uh, spent a thousand dollars on, on Facebook ads in, in the last, in the uh, last month. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, saw that. You know, I saw I'm that. Trying, I want to get to, to have five channels, but yeah, I saw I that had, dude. Uh, let's, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I haven't cracked the code yet. Yeah. No, I Plus, think, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Like I've, I've gotten some, I've gotten some leads, um, you know, it's starting to, starting to get a little bit better. I mean, to me, it's, it's SEO. So if I can, I just look at, I try to break everything down systematically in terms of stages. So how much does it call, how much does it cost to get the lead? How many leads do I need to actually have a, a sales call and how many sales calls do I need to close a new client? And if I, if my cost is a hundred percent of month one, I'm fine with that. If I pay a thousand dollars for a new client, you know, or even $2,000 for a new client, I'm fine with that. Cause I mean, I have good retention. So, you know, I mean, for, for me, I, you know, I, I have people that help me with prospecting, but you know, so I, I have salary and expenses there, but I'm currently, you know, doing all of the closing. So I don't have commission that I'm paying on top of right, okay. that. Um, I do offer my clients a commission discount if they refer people to me, which. Right, okay. So how many, you're getting a lot of referrals as well? Is that what you mean by word of mouth? Yeah. Yeah. They're mostly okay. referrals from existing clients. All right. So I'll just scribble down the channels that you're using to get prospects, maybe let's expand on each one just a little more. So what you said, the first one you mentioned was word of mouth. Um, I'm guessing that we just touched on that with referrals. So word of mouth, you're saying you're asking or at least reminding your existing clients, Hey, send me a lead and I'll pay you for that lead. Is that how yeah. you're working it? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just letting you know that we have a, um, you know, we have a, a business referral, um, you know, program for our preferred clients. And if you would, you know, if you'd like to join, if you have somebody that might be a, a fit, then, you know, we, uh, we, we are happy to bring you into our, our referral program. Okay. And how much you, you it's interesting. I'm, I'll be interested in to know, uh, how you structured that because I know I, for myself, I've offered my clients money a payment, a commission, like I'll give you, I'll pay you $500. It's interesting. I've had discussions around paying for referrals with a number of people. And I said, I oh, said, I don't want to pay a thousand dollars or $500 for a referral. And I said, well, you're going to spend that money either way, you know, whether it's paid or paid traffic or you hire someone to do the prospecting or it's your own time invested in performing manual outreach. So you, whether you know it or not, you're paying for that for those leads in some way. Um, yeah, another thing that I've done, it's the same concept when I say word of mouth, but this is really included in it. I've actually gone to a couple of manufacturing companies uh, that, for instance, like if you want to be in landscaping, like I just, I just made contact with somebody that they manufacture turf. They're one of the largest turf manufacturers in the United States. Okay. And I, I, you know, I looked at the company, I worked my way into the company, I ended up getting an, an introduction to one of their, their top salespeople, schedule a call with them. And I let them know because they sell turf to landscapers. And they've got, you know, they sell, they have thousands of landscapers or their clients. So I told them that if you want your you know, your uh, landscapers to buy more turf from you and you want them to get more jobs, then refer them to me and I'll get them, you know, I'll get them more work and oh, I'll be happy to pay you for it too. 
Yeah. So you're out there banging on doors. Is that how you made the connection there? Yeah, I literally looked at the company and I figured out if I had anybody in my network that had any connections to the company and if they'd be willing to make right. an introduction. To me. Yeah, that's that's pretty smart, man. Um, so how did you how did you actually establish that connection? Did you physically go to to the location um, or did you make that connection online and then you jumped on a zoom call or something? Yeah, I made, I made the connection on online. I mean, I started looking for manufacturers that sell things to contractors. Right. And started doing some, I started doing some research and I happened to find this, uh, you know, it's an artificial turf manufacturer and they have their headquarters pretty near to where I live. So, you know, I just did a little bit more research, found yeah. out where the connections were. And then, um, and then, yeah, I mean, they have clients there. They've got like 15 different offices all over the East coast. So they have a lot. So you're, know, you're looking at targeting landscapers or tradespeople in particular. Is that why you chose that? Um, yeah, that I, mean, I think you can, uh, that's, I, I did it because I was able to make the, the connection. I'm not necessarily looking to um, to niche down in in landscaping, but I think you can do it for for pretty much anything. Like I'm going to definitely be doing it for roofers. Right. There are so many different mm -hmm. manufacturers that sell things for roofing companies. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, I'm just thinking. Uh, I'm just thinking while just while on that topic, um, we've got a fairly large company here, Reese. Um, they provide uh, plumbing supplies and equipment. Um, yeah. you know, that, that would be, I mean, it might be difficult to get a foot in the door because they're a sizable company, but I can definitely understand and appreciate the angle that you've taken there. And I think that's pretty smart. It's very similar to the conversation that we had in the group some time ago, where instead of running around doing the whole, um, one-to-one -one connection thing, um, you're going to someone that, you know, has that one-to-many they've already got an established network, like an accountant or something right. who serves 500 different business owners who exactly. can put you in touch. The yeah. same exact idea as, as an accountant, except it's a little bit more, um, I've, I've stayed away. Like I thought about doing this to um, accountants and to IT companies, but I didn't end up doing it because they, their clientele is so broad so I decided yeah, to first yeah. try and do it for somebody that manufactures things for a, a trade industry because then they, you know, they have all of the same clientele. So, yeah. it, you know, no, that's, that's a, a fulfillment I, thing. But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was kind of the, the reasoning behind it. And yeah, I mean, it, it seems to be working out, working out pretty well. And I mean, the way that I was looking at it is like, but this company has already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to acquire those clients. And they're the same clients that I want to acquire. So if I can piggyback off of yeah. money and relationships that they already yeah. have that they've spent, then why not? <laughs> you're, you know? you're a smart guy, George. You're a smart cookie. <laughs> yeah. um, I just wanted to touch back on word of mouth because uh, we, were, we were talking about paying for the referrals. Um, I, I, what I found when it comes to word of mouth, George, is that I was giving my clients two options. I was saying, listen, I'll either pay you for the lead or I'll allocate uh, two or three free hours towards your own campaign at no cost. And 100% of my clients took me up on that option. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll take the two or three hours. And for me, like if I can, if I can offload that to one of my um, staff, you know, I might be paying them like $25 an hour. So it doesn't really cost me that much at all. I'm no. not sitting here doing the work, of course. So that, that's interesting. Have, did you consider that or are you just happy to pay for the lead? Yeah, no, it's the same. It's the same thing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say that I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them a discount. Um, you know, usually like the equivalent of work of about five. Right. Okay. Um, you know, so very similar to, to what you're saying. Yeah. And a couple of times, to be honest with you, they have, they've told me not to worry about it because they're, you know, the yeah. clients that usually refer to me are extremely happy with my yeah. business. Yeah. And I've, I've found that too. Yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, I've gotten several referrals 
from clients that, yeah, they just haven't, um, yeah. they, they, they haven't it's, even picked me up on it. You know, another thing that I'm, I'm thinking about when we spoke to this, it's the same concept. I've actually gotten three clients from a business coach and I, you know, I did, I did the same, it was the same idea as trying to reach out to these manufacturing companies, same concept. Like I reach out to the business coach. He's a, uh, you know, he's pretty well known in this, in this area. And I just, you know, basically had a, had a conversation with him for a little bit. I gave him some free advice. You know, I probably spent, you know, I, I would imagine two or three hours helping him. I didn't, I didn't actually do any work uh, in terms of uh, like we didn't do anything for, for his website or anything like that. But I just I helped him a little bit with strategy, right? And he was pretty impressed by it. Yeah. And yeah, he's he's referred. Oh, really? How do you pronounce your last name? Coker. Coker. Okay. Because I'm just thinking this. I love this strategy. This this. Um, I'm just trying. We need a fancy name for this, right? So the, the, the Coca method or something, we need yeah, to brand right. it somehow. Right. So, yeah. So because you go to one person who has numerous potential yeah. contacts. Yeah. So we'll have, yeah. we'll, brand, we'll brand it on the call, the Coca, the right. Coca strategy, the Coca method. Um, the next one you, that you mentioned that we'll just touch on real quick. Um, you, you said that your own site, SEO, your own site is uh, performing well in search. What strategy did you take there? Are you targeting specific locations or industries? What are you doing? Yeah, so I'm really not doing that much. I, you know, I built my website for brand purposes. Yeah, you know, I, I really, I just wanted my website to look good and to look professional when, when people find me from the different various sales efforts that I, that I have. So I didn't, I didn't build it necessarily uh, with the idea of acquiring clients for it, but. Just um, you know, over the last seven or eight months since I really started this company full time, I've been quoted in a lot of different magazines and publications and stuff like that. So, it's in, aren't you, know, you doing some stuff? You're doing some stuff in Forbes as well. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can we talk about that. Are we allowed to talk yeah. about that? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. No. Okay, so that, that's that's interesting. So you haven't actually made too much of a conscious effort there to, with with SEO and your own site. How do you think people are then finding you if you haven't spent a great deal of time on SEO? So so what I so what I did was I I ended up getting um, all of those natural backlinks from. Uh, I mean, my backlink profile is pretty strong in terms of I've probably got ten or fifteen websites that are over a DR of, you know, 65 or something like that, the link to my site that just happened because I wanted the, wanted the brand recognition. I wanted to be in Inc magazine. I wanted to be in Forbes and right. stuff like that. So I got all of that. And, uh, I was like, well, heck my, my website's pretty powerful. So I built a couple of, um, local pages out to rank for digital marketing, for SEO, for web design. And, I basically, as soon as I built them, they just popped up. And so you're yeah. talking, you're um, targeting specific locations in order to attract businesses yeah. in those areas, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess we could talk forever about um, how you got published in the likes of Forbes and Inc. and so forth. Maybe yeah. we could, I don't know if you want to touch on that. Maybe that might be another uh, a subject for another call, but yeah, I could, I could talk about it quickly if, you know, if you, if you want, but it's, it's just all to me, it was just all about the presentation. I just wanted to be able to, I mean, what I, what I said to, you know, to a prospect before they, they show up, Hey, you know, take a look at this article that I just published in Forbes. It'll help educate you a little bit about right. um, SEO and, mm -hmm. you know, different inner workings of things. They like, they come into that meeting. Right believing that yeah. I'm an expert and that's yeah. how I am. Okay. Yeah. So that, that would build um, an incredible amount of trust and credibility. Um, and that could be a good solution uh, for those that are concerned about um, not having uh, results to show, especially for people that are new to the industry and just getting started. Well, um, look, that, that's it, a conversation think, that keeps coming up. 
my company is really like I started this company three and a half years ago, but I had another job. And I was I was just doing this on weekends. I only had really, you know, three consistent clients. And I started doing this thing full time in November. So it really hasn't been that long at all. I don't have a million different case studies to to show people. Yeah, you know, I'm just I've just been trying to do everything that I can to right. build ability and you know really build trust and and goodwill and it's it's served me well. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. I really like that angle. I mean, not not a, we can't all get published in huge uh, publications, but it's certainly it's certainly something to um, at least consider and be aware of as a as an angle to get started. I mean. You know, I guess if you're brand new to SEO and you don't know anything, well, then you, these strategies may not be applicable. But for those that have, and this has been true for me when I started this training and I'm doing the private coaching, people come in on different skill sets with different levels of knowledge. And I find for the most part that a lot of people are very proficient in terms of technical SEO, but the business side of things, they're very weak or they're very a lot of people are quite disorganized and don't have processes in place. So, yeah. Um, you know, if you have those skill sets, you can, you should be able to get, you know, publications and share some of that technical knowledge as a means of building um, some trust and credibility. Yeah. I mean, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. It's not the most, I did this, you know, it's the same thing. It's all, it's all the Coker method. It's all the same strategy. <laughs> well, get, all some, get some t-shirts made to get some yeah, t-shirts made up. That's, no, that's, I mean, seriously though, it was just, you know, I, I, I hopped on my LinkedIn and I, I looked at, you know, some people that are contributors and I connected with them and started speaking with them and I didn't, you know, ask them for anything right away. And then, you know, started a real conversation with them and then yeah that, that's that was my next point the LinkedIn stuff maybe share with us what you've been doing there to get leads yeah are you doing this yourself the out manual outreach or have you got a t have you hired a staff member to do it for you yeah I've got a I've, I've got a virtual assistant that that helps me but I'm still I, I covet a lot of it myself um, I I do have somebody now that's that's making cold calls and setting appointments for me, and I do have somebody that's actually doing the connections for me. So they're getting the connections, they're sending out the initial message, right. and they're getting the conversation started. And then and you then, take over once it's established. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's cool. So what I what are you doing on LinkedIn, George? Can you share some? some insights there with what you're doing. Yeah, is it it's, it's really pretty, it's really pretty inter it, um, pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm just, um, I'm just making it personal. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just making it personal. I'm, I'm using sales navigator. I'm targeting an industry and I'm connecting with as many people as I can, can in that industry every day. Right. And then everybody that connects with me, we're sending them a message and then, you know, hopefully they respond and I send them, you know, something back about, Hey, your, you know, your, uh, your company looks like it's great. I see you're in, you know, to turf insulation. And, yeah. uh, so you're not, you're not going straight for the kill. You're not going straight for the kill. <laughs> what's, sa what's sales navigator? Is that an advertising platform on LinkedIn? Is it? Yeah. Uh, sales navigator is something that LinkedIn offers. It costs $80 a month. Right. And, it allows you to essentially um, segment. So you can you can segment LinkedIn. So if you type in turf insulation, you can get everybody that owns a turf insulation company in okay. the country. And so my you know assistant just goes down the list, connects with everybody, and then you know sends a message to them and maybe a response message, you know, message also. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the whole idea is just to say hello, start a conversation. It's not a, not a hard yeah, sell. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mean, mean $80, $80 a month. And I'm guessing you can contact as many people as you want, or is there a limitation there? Oh, there's no one, there's no limitation. Yeah. It's a no brainer. 
So 80, 80 bucks a month is absolute peanuts. I mean, yeah. you spend that in half a day using something like AdWords or Facebook yeah, ads. It's absolute no brainer. Yeah. And I have an unbelievable amount of, look, when I have a captive audience, when I can start talking to somebody and I'm talking to the decision maker, like I can, I can sell, you know, yeah, like yeah. if I yeah. could, if I could get a captive audience where they're answering me and we're engaged in a conversation, yeah. then that's all I need. You know, yeah. that's why I like the cold calls because I, you know, if you have them on the phone, then that's, that's all that I need. I haven't figured out Facebook ads yet because it's like, you know, it's this whole idea of like, you know, nurturing yeah. without talk. I just want them on the phone. I want them in front of me. And then well, you can, you can you know, certainly do that with the strategy that I, with the strategy that I showed you where you have your, yeah. your ad, your landing page, your value video where you demonstrate expertise and credibility and yeah. trust. And then you, uh, you encourage them to book the call. You know, you can pre-qualify with a number of questions, then get them on the call. I'm the same as you, George. I know with, um, with a great deal of certainty that once I get someone on a Zoom call, they're going to be working with me, whether it's an SEO right. client or it's a coaching client. Right. Was, and and the, the, the thing is, too, that it's like you're – you have, like, even just speaking with you, I can tell you, you are certain in your abilities – Right, you're you're self assured. You're yourself. You don't have to hide who you are, and you know that's that's attractive to. And I'm know, completely so. comfortable in my offer. I absolutely believe in what I'm selling, and right. I think this is where a lot of people might fall short: is that they have doubt or uncertainty, and there's a little bit of I'm not sure if this is actually going to work, but I'm going to I'm going to try and sell it anyway. That's when you get into some trouble. Yeah, um, I don't, and. You know, I heard some back and forth about that at one point in your in your group. But like, I don't have, I don't have any problem charging a high price because I I know that mm. if I'm working with somebody, like I I just I don't I personally believe that I don't think they're going to get anybody better. Yeah. They, you know, they're going to get the biggest bang for their buck. Yeah. So again, it's a lot of this stuff's mindset, but. You know, I try and make it as simple as possible for people to get their head around. You know, if you pick up, if you're working with the right clients and a sale, a lead value or a sale for them is two or three thousand dollars, and they're paying you, and they're paying you twenty five hundred, two or three thousand dollars a month, you've only got the one fucking customer, or may help them make yeah. one sale. And if you, I mean, let's face it, you should be making, you should be helping them with twenty, thirty, forty, three hundred, five hundred transactions a month. It's an right. absolute, the price is irrelevant. The cost is irrelevant. Totally so right. and I think, I think that's where a lot of this stuff is, you know, and I, I mentioned this in a recent post, I speak with Byron a lot about, you know, these false belief systems. We start believing our own thoughts, whether they're, they're true or not, you know, $2,500 is such a lot of money. It's not for a company that's doing fucking $10 million a year. It's peanuts. No, it's it's peanuts. It's nothing. It's actually, it's actually like, you know, it, it's actually a favor to them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a favor to them that, that should probably be adjusted after six months. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's right. And a lot of, a lot of times you go back and say, listen, we need to up the rates here. Fuck. What took you so long to ask? Yeah. <laughs> well, Oh shit. I wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah. how about, let's chat. Let's chat quickly about the next one, George. Um, cold calling. What are you doing there? Just have a, a list of, of contacts in a specific industry, and yeah. I have it in um, in a CRM system where it just you know goes down the line and calls every every one of the contacts, and they don't answer. It leaves a voicemail, asks right. for a contact, and um, and and yeah, that's pretty much it. They're just trying to set an appointment. So I have a script that I put together and just making calls to, with the whole goal of scheduling an appointment for me to get on the phone with them. Right. Okay. So you've niched down, you have, I'm not, I don't want to ask where you get those phone numbers from, but I'm, I'm it's, sure. It's I all, mean, you can do it anywhere. You just, you know, you scrape Angie's list, scrape yellow pages, whatever you right, want okay. to do. Okay. And you're just going okay. through that list. Um, I know for me, for me personally, 
Um, I thought you might have been buying them on the dark web. <laughs> no, but that would be cool. I, just showed up <laughs> um, I know for me personally, cold calling is not for me. I, I, you know, I get people calling me several times a day trying to sell me shit, you know, fucking solar panels and um, electricity and SEO and God knows what else and religion. And I'm like, fuck, I can't hang up the phone fast enough. And I know there'd probably be a number of other people in the group. Maybe it's different in the U S but cold calling here. Yeah, it's not, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it's certainly not something that I would do. Well, what, what are your it's, thoughts on that? Because same, I think people either love it or they absolutely detest it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I think, uh, I probably feel the same way that, that you feel about it. Like, I, I don't like, you know, I, I don't like it, but, if you know if i if i know that for every 100 calls i i make that i can get that i can get two appointments you know and i can close you know one out of every five appointments are going to turn into an seo client or you know whatever the exact numbers are and i can make 100 calls i can have somebody make 100 calls a day then you know, those numbers work out to be, you know, less than 50% of, you know, month, month. Are you, making the, are you making the calls, George, or have you got a team member that does a, that for you and yeah. then you take over once it's established? Yeah, that once they set the appointment for me. Right, okay, okay. Um, I just want to touch on something real quick here. And um, I remember having a chat with, I can't remember, someone in the group, we were having a chat about, um, oh, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to annoy them. I can't remember if it was an email or something. I don't want to annoy them because, you know, I find that really annoying. And, I, you know, I started training in that direction just a second ago. It can be really easy to make the assumption that the person at the other end is going to consider your call a nuisance or annoying. For all you know, they might be sitting there thinking, fuck, I really need to get cracking with this online marketing stuff. I need That's to find I mean. someone. Ring, ring. Yeah. Oh, man, perfect timing. That's happened to me several times, you know, like, oh, fuck, John, yeah. perfect timing. Or I'll, I'll follow up on a on a on an old lead or something. Oh, fuck, John, brilliant. We've been thinking about getting in touch. So you can't make the assumption that yeah. calling I mean, or getting in touch with it, uh, with someone is going to give them the shits. <laughs> you, call, you call a thousand, you know, I just keep using the, the like, example, like turf insulation. I'm not even super big in that, but I'm just saying, like, call a thousand of those people and you let them know, Hey, we've got 10 clients that do turf insulation. And these are the type of numbers that, that we have. Do you want to hop on a phone call and talk more about it? Like half of these guys are going to be like, wow, you really, you, you know something about turf insulation, you know, yeah. I mean, they're, like it, it's just about, it's just about the presentation and a, mm -hmm. a lot of them are happy to happy to do it. Yeah. 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 I think that that's when you get into the whole specializing and niching down um, you and you, your positioning. For, yeah. Yeah. You can't just call for SEO. Like you yeah. just call, you know, for, for SEO. It's like, <laughs> yeah. then it's like, what, is, what is this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, then you're no different than, yeah. you got to, you got to, you got a cake shop at L on beach. You need SEO. Well, we're selling like $6 cakes here, man. I, yeah, I think the first note that I scribbled down here, it seems to me that you're very, very proactive in in this area, George. And I think there might be a lot of freelancers that are, you know, fucking around on Facebook and, you know, they're, they're spending time mucking around doing SEO on their own website or, you know, it can be really easy to be sitting around on your ass just waiting for the phone to ring. That just doesn't happen. Yeah, the, the SEO um, for me, I mean, I call that a, a channel, but it, it basically, like I said, I mean, it basically happened by accident. I was getting those links for credibility purposes, and then I was like, well, shoot, my website's got, is so powerful, I might as well build out a couple of, yeah, a couple of local, uh, right. locally pages, and because it already had so much power, I mean, they popped mm -hmm. up at number one right away. So yeah, you're quite, you're very, um, you're very active in terms of sourcing leads. I mean, that, that'd be a fair statement, right? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm here to, I'm here to make money. <laughs> what would be your advice to people that might be struggling to get leads? I know you've shared some great um, insights here and everyone has, I mean, a, apart from you, has problems getting, <laughs> getting yeah. leads, but what would your advice be for, you know, cause I, you know, I get on a lot of these calls and oh, man, I'm really struggling to get leads and what do I do? And, you know, I've got a big long list of way, different ways of getting fucking leads. I never had a problem getting leads, but for some people it seems to be a real pain point. What would be your advice there? Well, I'd probably say two different things. Um, one, you know, first and foremost, like take a sales training class, you know, like edu educate yourself. Like if you're doing SEO, like what, what is SEO, what does your SEO skills matter if you can't get in front of your, of the right audience, you know, learn, like I look at sales the same way that a lot of people look at technical SEO. You know, sales is a technical skill set that you have to learn. And right. I've spent years learning sales. I'm a student of sales. I, I'm always trying to learn about sales. I've read tons of books. I've listened to tons of podcasts. I've, you know, paid $10,000 for sales training seminars. I've led sales teams. So it's not something that's just, you know, to, to think that you're going to be good at it without practice. You didn't learn SEO overnight. You're not going to learn sales overnight. So get comfortable with scale with sales and start doing, you know, doing the learning. And okay. this, you know, the second thing that I would say is that, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's a numbers game. You have to cast a, you have to cast a wide net because people are going to be broke. People are going to be all these different things and you have to have enough leads you know, back to what I was saying at the beginning where you can't have a mindset of scarcity because if you only have one proposal every month that you're giving, then you're going to be, you know, a lot more price sensitive or you're going to be very much, you're going to be much more reactionary to them. Yeah. If you, you, you gotta, you gotta get at bats. It's all about at bats. How many at bats do you? Yeah. The conversation I had with Des yesterday and I said this, and this might be, you know, this might, um, this, one, this might be sound advice for, for others that, uh, that aren't comfortable or confident uh, sitting in on a sales call and doing, you know, the initial call, a strategy call, sorry, the, the initial call and then the sales presentation. If you're not comfortable doing that or you don't want to do it, then it doesn't mean that you have to. And I think, you know, it's what people get caught up in fulfillment and they think they've got to do fucking everything. Freelancers are, you know, are, are guilty of that all the time. If you're not if you don't want to do it, then hire someone to do that part of the process for you. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it sounds, it's fucking common sense, right? But sometimes you're going to say, well, you don't have to be responsible for this. You, you can hire someone to do this for you. 